It's Wes and Ace on the Briscoe yeah. and Big Ace Show. All right, people. Freestyles of your boy Chip. Okay, everybody, welcome to episode number eight. It is the Briscoe and Big Ace Show. Back for another installment. What's going on, Wes? How are you doing? Man, I'm doing excellent. How about yourself, man? What's been going on with you? Well, you know, I live in Minnesota, and we're dealing with this whole polar vortex thing, so it's it's extremely <clears throat> cold. We just got done with a snowstorm. Now we're getting ready for, like, 50, 60 below weather. Holy moly. Days. So uh, tell me a little bit, bit about this. Yeah, it's, it's freezing cold. It's freezing cold. It's, like, apparently, like, the air from the North Pole somehow got, like, shoved down this way, and, like, the whole Midwest is dealing with it. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty crappy. Like, uh, today is Tuesday we're recording this, so on Monday they canceled, like, through Wednesday for school. Oh, so, man. Certain places are closing down for the next two days as far as just, like, stores and, and like, government buildings. And, yeah, it's going to be, like, super, super nasty cold out. Uh, one of the worst. It's actually, I think, tomorrow in Chicago is supposed to be colder there tomorrow than it will be in Antarctica tomorrow. Holy moly. Well, I mean, I hate to rub it in, but man, today we had a nice cool 76, completely sunny. I actually went surfing this morning, caught some really good waves. I actually got barrel today, which in front of all my friends, which is like the best thing in surfing is to get a barrel. And like one of my buddies, Danny, he was like paddling out and he looked over and he was like, yeah, Wes, get the wave, please. And I like paddled my butt off. And as soon as I pulled in, I like, ducked in and then it gave me this awesome little barrel and what a barrel is to people that don't know surfing or maybe don't have a clue what i'm talking about it's not like a barrel of a gun or that type of barrel or a whiskey barrel it is well when you go surfing and you cut into the wave and all of a sudden the wave will come up and it'll create like this like circle and also in the it'll come right over you and you're like trapped inside this wave but there's like a perfect opening and then all of a sudden you get spit out and as soon as you get out it's like the most craziest feeling it's hard to even explain to it the feeling you get afterwards it's just something you just always want to live for and always want to try to catch the next wave and get that next barrel yeah i did nothing like that that sounds so much better. really Sounds so much better than what we've been doing here. It's been a lot of uh, shoveling or just not even that. Like, wake up and I stay. Like, the last two days I've had off because I've been working a lot lately. And, uh, yeah, so I've been just staying in my apartment. I haven't left. Like, that's how bad and, like, cold it is outside. It's not even worth going. Like, I haven't even gone outside to do anything. I haven't checked up my car. I haven't gone to get my mail. Like, no, it's cold. I'm just staying in until I have to leave. That's well, for all the guests that don't know, Big Ace is actually coming down and coming to visit me. And we're going to be doing a lot of new stuff for the podcast, doing a lot of new video vlogs. We're going to do a bunch of cool stuff, but hopefully you'll get some of the sunshine and some of this warm weather, man, when you come down to visit. Are you excited for that? <laughs> Dude, I got my shorts all ready to go. I'm like, just get me out of this place. Just get me away from the cold. <laughs> You're going to be the whitest guy in Florida. I'm usually the whitest guy wherever I go, so I'm cool with that. It's no big deal. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's going to be good. I'm excited. Now, I do want to just ask, because I saw a video real quick before we move on, of, of a guy surfing, and it was like an 82-foot wave. Like, so it was. it looked impossible to me but this dude was surfing it. Yeah, like, but that wave is actually called Nazareth, and it's in Portugal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, what's the tallest wave you've been able to surf on? Um, probably a two-story building. All right. And that was, in, that was in Mexico, and it was probably a good 10 to 12 foot. And that's, like, not Florida 10 to 12 foot, like, Mexico 10 to 12 foot. So, Florida, we'd be like, oh, that's, like, 50 to 20 feet. But in Mexico and Hawaii, they would be like, nah, that's about 10 foot, their standards, which, you know, that's huge for me. And believe it or not, I almost drowned that day. It was one of the craziest experiences of my life. It was before I got like really good at surfing and I like paddled out and I thought I could hang. And I got out there and I realized 
man, I shouldn't be out here. Like it was just way too big. I literally sat out there for three hours, didn't catch one wave. And then when I finally did catch the wave, when I fell, it drugged me down, pulled me down to the bottom of the ocean, drugged me, flipped me, spun me, hold me down where I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can breathe. And I'm like, calm down, Wes, calm down. It's going to let you up. No. Toss, turn, more on the bottom where I'm starting. Okay, now I'm starting to freak out. Then all of a sudden, okay, I get the waves, they stop spinning me on the ground. Then I swim up to the top. I get one breath. I'm like, and then all of a sudden, there's another 10 footer about to crash on my head. So luckily, I got just enough breath. Bam, it slammed me down. It broke my leash, which my leash is the uh, cord that's connected my surfboard, which is pretty much my lifeline, the only thing that floats. It snaps that completely in half, goes to the short. So I don't even have a surfboard. I'm out there in like 10 to 12 foot in the Pacific Ocean of Mexico, just getting slammed. Finally, finally, I get drugged up to the sand. I remember looking around and just kissing the beach and just laying there. I kissed the sand. I just lay there. I was like, thank God. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. I don't think I'll ever go surfing now. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for the story being so long. But. No, the story was amazing. I'm just, I pretty much convinced me to never touch a surfboard now in the ocean. So, well, I mean, don't go out when it's, you know, 20 foot, you know, uh, when you come out, if it's warm enough, you know, I'll put you out there on the board long as it's, you know, safe. We'll get you out there on a one footer. Oh, geez. We'll put some water wings on you. You'll be all right. You know, we'll get the water wings. I'm sure. How many people, if you guys want to see a surf, please leave a comment, especially on our YouTube thing. Leave a comment. Tell us if you want to see Big Ace on a surfboard when he comes and visit me. I hope uh -oh. everybody says. Uh -oh. Hopefully everybody says no and they're kind. I don't think I can handle that. Hopefully they say yes and they want oh. to one of my rusty speedos. <laughs> I don't know if that would be uh, you have a better chance of the surfing happen than the speedo happening, but well, it's all up to the fans. Depends on how many likes and how many comments. I mean, if we get over a hundred comments saying they want to see you in the ocean in the speedo, buddy. You're getting in the ocean with a speedo. I say we keep it to the ocean. That's a big enough feat for me. I'm already afraid of drowning in my shower. So that's the big feat. I'd say we leave the speedo out because no one wants to embarrass himself that much. Nam includes looking at it too. So, but, <laughs> but you know, it's yeah, we'll see. It's going to be a good time. We also have a show that you're going to be going and, and uh, working at while I'm out there. So we'll hang out at that show as well and have some fun too. So it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it'll be really fun. And guys, we'll get a bunch of interviews and we're going to do, we're going to video vlog the whole trip. So you guys can get a bunch of content of just not us like doing the podcast with us traveling, going to the event, just a bunch of cool stuff that hasn't been shown yet. And we're going to kind of show you kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff. So please stay tuned and check it out. That is right. So now moving on, a lot of big stuff going on recently that we want to talk about. And the first thing is, your good friend, uh, Jake Hager, many people may know him as Jack Swagger, made his big Bellator debut this last weekend with a uh, well, first M it was his MMA debut as a pro debut, right? Yeah, so a uh, big win. He uh, made him made the guy tap out in the first round, took one shot to the nose, though, pretty Ooh, quick. Oh, yeah, so let me uh. Let me tell you guys a little backstory of uh, Jake. And uh, so if you guys don't know this, in the wrestling world right now, uh, my dad is pretty uh, high up in WWE. And what he does is he picks talent. And he does all the MMA and wrestling and he scouts people. So basically right now he's semi-retired and he works for WWE as a uh, scout. And I remember... Before, like, my dad's one of the guys that signed Swagger. My dad signed Dolph. My dad signed Brock Lesnar. My dad signed a lot of the big talent. Uh, my dad signed Kurt Angle. There's a lot of guys that my dad was fully involved with signing. And I remember my dad telling me at the time, I believe I was in high school at the time um, when they signed Swagger. And uh, I remember my dad going to OU 
and watching him wrestle because my dad's like, oh man, Wes, you got to see this guy. He's such a stud. Right now he holds the pin record for uh, the heavyweight of OU. I'm like, no way. And then my dad showed me and, and like, I was like, wow, this guy is tall and kind of a little pudgy. I'm not going to lie. He had a, like, he had a little punch to him. And I'm like, man, this guy is huge. And my dad's like, yeah, he's going to be, he's going to do really well. And then it was crazy to see a couple of years later when him, when he actually won the title. And then my dad looking at me, I told you the kid had some talent. And uh, I've, so I, I've been around Swagger for a really long time and I've known him for a really long time. And he was telling me, I actually texted him before the fight and you know, I didn't want to say good luck or anything because, you know, you don't want to be that guy that's like, hey, man, good luck, man. You know, go get him, Tiger. Like, how many people called him and texted him that? You know? Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Dude, like so many. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, you know, I just texted him. I was like, hey, man, looking forward to it. I'm going to my dad's house. We're going to watch you kick some ass. And then he texted me back. He's like, oh, thank you. Tell Pops I love him. And, you know, so um, it was absolutely crazy. It was so good to see him, especially because all the guys talking smack. What did you think about all the announcers talking smack? That was the most down talk on wrestling I've ever heard. Like everything was just yeah, a yeah. shot to the wrestling industry, and it was really bothering me. I, I'm I'm hoping maybe, and you know, I'm I'm just guessing. I wasn't in the locker room with him. I don't know him like you know him. But they even asked him. Like it, they kept saying the stupid shit about. Well, now he's going to get punches thrown at him for real. And then they even asked him in that pre-interview before he came out, like, well, you know, you're going to actually have punches coming at you for real this time. And, like, literally all he did was laugh at it. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I well, mean, okay. That's just a big question because, Ace, don't you think he's been training? Don't you think he gets oh, yeah. hit and punched for real in training? Right, Ace? Right, exactly, exactly. That And that just also falls into the whole – you know, you don't see like the UFC announcers saying that kind of stuff, not sh shooting at Bellator or whatever, but it was easy for them to cling on to the whole, oh, you know, this is the real stuff, not that fake corny stuff where it's like, okay, that's not a thing anymore. You have, no, it's like, come on now. You got right. Ronda Rousey who went to WWE from the UFC and is having a phenomenal career. You've got Matt Riddle, who's gone from the UFC into the pro wrestling world. He's uh, having a great debut going on in NXT right now. Mm -hmm. You've had, you know, Dan the B. Severed. You've had Kurt, Ken Shamrock. You've had all these names that have come from MMA to pro wrestling or vice versa. That it's like, why are we like, yes, there's obviously difference in the buildings, difference, you know, different in the business, but I mean, to act like being in professional wrestling is nothing and that yeah. you don't even get touched. You're fine is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I've never been in the ring myself, but I know what you guys go through and you are in the ring on, on a constant basis. And it's like, to me, it's just kind of like, really? Haven't we, yeah. been, haven't we gotten past this? I know I was really, I was, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was really upset with the commentary. I was just like, come on now like enough's enough you know what i mean there comes the point where it's like hey man like dude he's a great champion just leave it at that and you know what my favorite part is he shut all those guys up and especially it started with the elbow and then once he mm -hmm. gave that elbow and split them open that elbow was the if you guys watch the fight the elbow was the key thing that set up that choke because as soon as he elbowed him Right when he elbowed him, he, if you watch the video, that's when he lifted up his hands and he was able to slide. Okay, like to be able to do this choke, I've been able, I've done this choke a couple of times, so I actually know how to like perform it. So as he elbowed him, when he elbowed the his, the guy, I forgot what was his opponent's name. Do you remember? I, I, I don't. I don't remember. Who cares? He lost. Uh, sorry, no guys. My respect to the guy, but. Um, when Swagger elbowed him, as soon as he elbowed him, the guy lifted up his hands. So as the guy lifted up his hands, because he thought Swagger was going to come down with the other elbow. So what Swagger did is he saw that he dipped through, put the arm over the neck, and then cried the uh, neck arm choke. Right. And it's not often that you see an MMA finish with a belly-to-belly -belly, uh, submission. 
No, and Swagger was just such a beast. I mean, like I said, he was a little bit pudgy. He's probably going to laugh or maybe kick my ass. I don't know when he hears this. But he was a little bit pudgy, and look how ripped he was. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He was probably in the best shape I've ever seen him. Yeah, he was definitely looking good going into that. It was a really cool Really cool to see it go down because you have seen some of the guys. They even joked. <laughs> they even joked on CM Punk where they're like, well, this guy has come to MMA and, well, he maybe he shouldn't have. And then, oh, Bobby Lashley. And they started talking about some other guys who came over. And, and mm-hmm. you know, it's cool to see, you know, him, him be able to do it. He wanted to do it. So now he's got his first one in there. He's saying that this is what it's going to be for the future. Be, yep. cool to, be cool to see him like really pick it up, really get going, maybe even make a hop to the UFC, get some big time. Not that, again, not that Bellator is not, but it's just like the wrestling world. Let's be honest. Yeah, everybody tries to shoot for WWE. It is top, as of now, it is top of the food chain. But I, I think he's doing it the right way, though. He's, yeah, I think but... he's doing it as, you know, starting, starting at a lower division and working his way up. Because to be honest with you, I think if they threw him right to the Wolves, I don't know if it wouldn't have been the same way. You well, know that, what I mean? Then you're you, then you're just being looked at as you're being brought in as a name, like CM exactly. Punk. Exactly. They brought He's him in because of his name. Where now, if he gets to UFC someday, it's because Jake Hager can go. Exactly, and I, I like dude. He's doing everything the right way. And, you know, big shots up to my homie. And you know what? I think I think guys, we're gonna have him on the podcast sometime very soon. So guys, look forward to that one. And if you have any questions, you know, always hit us up. Always hit the comment button. Always hit the like button. There you go. Looking forward to that episode. Hopefully, we can get that to happen here very soon. Something else cool that uh, <laughs> that uh, Swagger had going on with him is he brought out uh, our truth. Oh my god! Yeah, walk to the cage. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, the best part of that is when he was getting, you know, like uh, when they were check the cut guys were checking him and stuff before he actually goes into the cage, and just in the background you just see that our truth is still just dancing around, kind of oh like, am I supposed to leave or what? Yes, yes. I, oh my god, I'm so glad you saw that because I thought I was the only guy that saw that. Guys, this is a funny thing. If you guys check it out, but yeah, it's like they're checking out Swagger, and then all of a sudden you they like pan they do this huge pan out and then you see our truth man he's stirring the groove baby he was he was still kicking it boy oh, hey, yeah. did you see the ring announcer girls the card girls i don't i don't know if i saw them how did oh my god what were you looking at boy well like everything i watched didn't go past the first round <laughs> no the chicks like right when he was getting checked that there was chicks right behind oh, him oh okay okay Ooh, wee. Mm. Yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. right yeah no that was a lot of fun it was funny too because there was lots of speculation because our truth as everybody knows was the entrant number 30 for the royal rumble the very next day yeah and our truth's gimmick you know obviously right now is he's not the smartest guy in the world shows up for the wrong thing at the wrong time so everybody was like oh is he gonna not show and be like or show up at the wrong building or show up during the women's rumble and all that but no he he was there he showed up number 30 came out didn't make it to the ring but he came out (laughs) so ace what did you uh i actually got to catch a little bit of the rumble what did you think of the rumble what did you what did you like well hmm man oh wait 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 sorry to cut you off i'm so bummed when becky lynch's wardrobe malfunction happened they went black you couldn't see it. Yes, they did catch oh it. Oh my uh, god! Right there. Why? Why? <laughs> oh my goodness! Why? Why, Lord? Why? Right, right, right. But then it's like, uh, you know, it's whatever. She's but, a professional. And she's working. I understand. Uh, you know, Come women's, on, women's movement. You know, all that stuff. But it's it's great. I'm for the women's, I'm yeah. for the women's movement twenty four seven, but. Hey, I want to see a nipple slip every once in a while. This is true. Yeah, and, you know, kind of saw the writing on the wall for that match anyway, so whatever. But, uh, yeah, would you feel about her coming back out, though, and actually winning the Rumble? I thought that was good because the way that they have her booked right now is kind of the fighting champion. It's kind of the girl that can get knocked down, can beat around, and she's just going to keep coming back, you know? Like, she is one of the people that just – you know, 
I love her to death. She's a sweetheart. And I love the way that they're booking her as, you know, this girl that doesn't care. That just, you know, you can beat her down, whatever. She's going to keep coming. You cannot stop her. And what did you think about? I So I didn't know they hired that girl that was on Ninja Warriors that won the yeah, Ninja yeah, Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. did you think about? Uh, what spot did you think was better? Did you think Naomi's spot was better when she walked across the barrier and jumped from the barrier to the stairs? Or do you think was better when, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but the girl that won the Ninja Warrior uh, did the handstand and then straddled the pole and then pulled herself up from the pole and then swung herself back into the ring, which I couldn't believe that that was pretty impressive. But Naomi thing was pretty crazy, too. Which one did you think, Ace, was your top one? Yeah, the other one, uh, so it was Naomi, and then it was Casey Cantanzero. Cantanzero is mm -hmm. her name. She's an NX, uh, nxt -er, uh first woman to win, like, the finals on, on American Ninja Warrior. The thing, nice. with the thing with the Naomi one is it was done before. That was directly... Uh, taken from John Morrison a few years yeah. ago when he would, did his little parkour where he landed, climbed up, walked yeah. down the railing, then jumped onto the stairs. Casey's was completely new. It was something we haven't Ooh, seen. Well, 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 no, 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 no. Well, we got you wrong. Oh, okay. well, well, see, see, that's why you had me here. She did a different way into the ring, but Kofi Kingston walked on his hands and got onto the steps. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about when she bear hugged the post though and climbed yes. up and over the post. Yes. That I agree was with something you on that I haven't seen okay, before. You got to so. be clear with me, brother. You got to be clear with me here. Now. So that that's what I meant. But yeah, no, Casey for sure. Just because, well, Hey, I, when Naomi did it, the first thing you thought of was, uh, this is the exact same thing. John Morrison did a few years back when he was in the rumble. When Casey mm -hmm. did it, it was still some shock of the fact that, She's in the Rumble. You haven't even seen her really on NXT yet. She really yeah, hasn't debuted no. on NXT TV yet. And she's yeah. in the Rumble. And then on top of that, the, the size. I mean, her size compared to everybody else in the ring in, you know, period. And she's always going to be the little the little one in there. So it's yeah, you, to she's see like, her she, do that, it was pretty sweet. She reminds me of AJ Lee. Yeah. She's like the almost the exact, like, AJ. I bet you they're like, watch a lot of AJ Lee. Because she actually has... A lot of AJ's moves, if you kind of watch. Yeah, I think so. I think she might be able to take it up a step, though, too, with just the oh, here, 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 yeah, and stuff. But she'll be able to do some crazy stuff, and that—that's what I like. I like the little underdog. I like the Ray Mysterio type. Someone you look at, you don't expect much. Like Mustafa Ali, right now, is really killing the game as far as being a guy that was probably supposed to be just a, a cruiserweight division player, and he's now made it to the SmackDown main, yeah, roster. main roster, right? You know what I mean? So uh, I like those guys that are a little bit smaller. You don't expect much, and then they they come out and they just blow your expectations away. So it was cool to see Casey in that. That was the big surprise too. A lot of NXTers coming out. You know? Holy moly! I didn't know half the people were in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of NXT. I thought the Australian girl did really well. She did the tall Australian girl. She did really good, and um, there was a couple other girls that I thought really stood out that did really well. That I was just like, man, okay, they're really stepping it up, and which I love to see. You know, most of the time right now, the women's are having better matches than the men. But there was some really good stuff. Didn't really like Flair's new look. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her right now, but. Yeah, I don't know. I it look didn't matter too much to me. It was interesting to see how it was going to play out. Has I she been know. hurt? Huh? Has she been hurt? She was off for a little bit a few months ago, I think, but she's been back pretty regularly the last month or two, I think. But uh, I don't know. It's interesting to see because now they're saying that she's going to get thrown into this match at WrestleMania with Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. Oh, they, let Becky have her. Let Becky have her uh, her mm -hmm. time. It's Becky's time, and Becky needs to have that. I and I hundred percent agree. I think that's what it needs to be. But the the big heavy talk is that she is going to get thrown into this match. It's going to be a triple threat match. I don't, yeah, I don't understand why, but well, I know why. 
to be honest with you, because what they're going to have is they're going to probably have Becky go over and they don't want Becky to beat Ronda and keep Ronda strong so Ronda can come back. So she'll probably, they'll probably have it where Becky beats Flair and then that way it keeps Ronda strong. That's just my scenario. If it plays out, guys, what's up? <laughs> right. It'll be interesting to see too because there is a lot of talk this week about how uh, at Mania time, that will be the end of Ronda's contract. Is that Ooh, she's supposedly well, done? I, mean, I think she's but, but it's also come out that it was a two year contract she signed, so she should have another year. Um, she also has kind of hinted to she, yeah, she wants to start a family, but oh, well, then if she wants to start a family, then but I feel right but i feel like she's not done yet the other thing that i think too is because you're not gonna not have ronda rousey in wwe with Shayna baszler with the other two and then have the a wwe four horsemen woman and you're not gonna have anything happen it was teased like a year ago when baszler was at nxt with all of them there it was teased at the end of that match at the rumble when sasha held up the four horsemen uh sign yeah, I saw that. I like that. Becky kind of did it at Monday. Kind of, she didn't put the sign up, but it was just kind of that feel. And then, or I'm sorry, Bailey. And then Becky comes mm -hmm. out while Bailey's still in the ring. They're all involved involved in that. So, what what I'd like to see is after Mania, she does stick around a little bit longer, and we see that play out because it'd be mm -hmm. a waste. It'd be a waste not to not to use that angle. I agree. I agree. Well, um, what did you guys? What did you think about the uh, men's men's rumble? The men's rumble was. See, there was a big rumbling going around online that there was going to be some big surprise, possibly, but it may not happen. I don't think it happened because, to me, nothing about the rumble with the men's get was really shocking or surprising. I agree with you. There was no, you know, every year they. They bring out somebody that you at least get some type of cool shock value where you're like, oh, man, cool. They brought off Jeff, Jeff Jarrett. Everyone's like, yeah, you know, I love Jeff Jarrett to death, but he was just on there. He just got in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations for being on the Hall of Fame. Congratulations on everything. But I think people were looking for someone a little bit, just maybe a new person they signed, maybe just someone that just – there was no – they didn't have the mystique normally as the Rumble has when there's someone that pops up that you're like, oh, no way, he's there. Oh, yeah, like, right. do you agree? No, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. You know, there was the big rumors of, hey, if Omega actually doesn't go to AEW and chooses WWE, this is where it would happen. Didn't happen, which mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of thought that was – really how it was going to go my thing is they just signed abyss and sanjay dutt to i believe producer roles wwe did which is yeah. awesome but that's a perfect thing right there why why wouldn't you if you just signed them why wouldn't you have abyss they should have had abyss least come out and do his yeah. thing and then have them yeah that would have been good i would have liked to see that and you big know. shot to a lot of them. I like I love both of those guys. I've wrestled both of them a hundred times. I mean, you know, should I go into a funny story about Abyss? Heck yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so uh, this is back in my TNA days, and uh we were doing a pay-per-view. It was um I sleep I think it was Slammiversary, I believe. It was in Arizona. And um they did this deal where uh we had uh Abyss handcuffs. And they were gimmick handcuffs. So, you know, at a certain time in the match, at the time, he was Joseph Parks. So mm -hmm. somewhere during the match, he was going to turn into the abyss. And when he turns into the abyss, he breaks the handcuffs, punches me, punches Garrett, goes in the ring, choke slams whoever, whatever, whatever. So this is happening. He starts struggling with the, the handcuffs. Finally, he breaks the handcuffs. So he didn't know that a handcuff slid around and the pointy end where the chain was was still up. So then he goes to work punch me. When he turns his fist, the thing comes in and bam, slices my eye completely in half. It swirled up my eye like a golf ball. Like I could not see out of my eye. It was bad. So, you know, I get to the back, you know, of course me, you know, I've been punched in the face so many times. I don't really care. It's kind of like whatever. 
And he got in the back and he's just like, Wes, I'm so sorry. He starts just apologizing. And I'm like, finally, I'm getting kind of annoyed of it. I'm like, hey, man, you punch like a girl. And he's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. No, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, for real. I'm like, you better stop apologizing. I go, you didn't even hit me hard enough to knock me out. What are you like, six six? I'm like six foot, and you didn't even knock me out. Come on now, that's some weak stuff. And then you can start seeing him getting mad and mad. I go, dude, it's all good. And then he starts laughing. But he, to this day, he always mentions it to me because I gave him so much shit because he swelled my eye up where I had to get it cut, reopened to drain all of it. It was so disgusting. But I, every time I'm like, man, you hit it like a girl. You hit it like a little boy. You can't even punch. You didn't even knock me out. It was just, a, it's just a <laughs> funny little story. That's awesome. But yeah, he would have been a great addition to just a surprise entrant in the Rumble, kind of like a Jarrett thing. But I don't know. I think everybody knew Rollins was going to go over. I think everybody knows where this is going. And it's Rollins and Brock Lesnar. Yep. Uh, you know, overall, the Rumble was cool. Uh, Again, like I expected a little bit more out of the men's rumble as far as maybe a surprise or a big pop, and it didn't really happen, but it was all right. Yeah, me too. You know, but the big news coming out of the rumble now, because we're a couple of days removed, is the fact that it's been broken that Dean Ambrose has told WWE he will not oh, renew in April. Holy moly. Which kind of, I mean, if you really paid, like, like for me, the whole nine Jacks. Huh? That's huge, huge, oh, huge news. It really is. Uh, you know, a lot of it sounds like it has to do with the fact that he's just not happy with the creative direction they're going with him. Um, but I mean, like, like the Nia Jax thing on Raw the other night was weird. Why, why are you having her interrupt him? It's garbage. Stuff like that. You know, like it's just you could tell. Like, you're gonna. I think you're gonna start to be able to tell who the guys are that want to leave for AEW because they're gonna start probably getting. Just well, isn't the rumor? Shitty. Yeah, isn't the rumors? Didn't you tell me the revival asked for their uh, for their let go? Yeah, the revival had asked for their let go, and then they basically got crapped on for it and told no. Um, there well, was they can't physically tell you uh, no to that. I mean, that's something that well, I mean, yeah, they have to go through what they have to do over there, but and then I think, I think, I don't know if Luke and uh, if Gallows and Anderson asked for a release, but it's. If they haven't asked, it's pretty speculated that they probably don't want to be there, especially I, with I AEW. Mean, and then, too, like how you were telling me they fully squashed Finn. Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Finn going, too, man. Yeah, that just didn't make any sense to me. You had him in the championship match. It was a late edition. It happened a week before the Rumble that he's in this cha title match. Does a good showing. He hurts Lesnar, makes it look like Lesnar was like, you know, almost going to lose. Lesnar beats him. Okay. And it was pretty shitty because it was right out of like a roll. Like he like Lesnar didn't do much. He just like reversed a pin and pinned him. Um, but then like after the match, he just started beating the crap out of Finn. And to yeah. me, I get it. I guess you want to make Brock look strong because in the match wise, Finn Finn exposed him. He hurt him. No one's hurt him before. And Finn hurt him. But it would also is just like, man, like Finn should be one of your top guys. Why are you just treating like why are you shitting on him? Like, why wouldn't you want to pull the trigger and have a Rollins Finn Balor title match at WrestleMania and have a five star match at your biggest pay per view as opposed to just another Brock Lesnar match? Yep. You know, that's just something that you gotta think of. And it's you know, it's crazy. You know, that's why everyone, too, just as you're saying this, that's why everybody's want to leave and go to, you know, all elite wrestling. You know, that's, you know, that's the whole thing is everybody is tired of the way that they give. Basically, the creative people in WWE, I love them, but some people don't. I, you know, I don't like some of the writers, but I'm going to break it down to you. This is what they are. Most of those writers are people that have no idea about wrestling, and most of them don't even care about wrestling. And I'm going to give you a little Iggy on what they hire mainly young, young writers because all the old writers know better because if you work for WWE and you're a writer, you're not going to get all the 
all the benefits of being a writer in Hollywood. You're not going to get the SAG. You're not going to get the benefits. You're not going to get the 401k. You're not going to get the in insurance compared if you become a writer in Hollywood, you get all of that. Mm -hmm. We snag up writers that, you know, are trying to make it in them somewhere else and they don't really care about wrestling and they have no, I, they don't even, they've never grown up. They've never seen it. They don't have any idea what it does. And they basically just, Thing. and that's why you get some of those segments that you watch and you're just like are you kidding me like who the hell is writing this stuff yeah yeah i remember the bailey and alexa bliss feud that happened where they were doing some just awful awful sp uh segments with bliss and bailey and it was just uncomfortable like it was so bad but yeah, that's the one thing with all elite wrestling that they have going for them is they claim there's going to be no creative team. Like, it's going to be left to the like, boys. See, I think there should be a little bit of creative team. I think it should be older wrestlers that, like Pat Patterson and guys that know good storytelling and the wrestlers that got over by telling good stories and have them just give a little bit of the influence because yeah. – it's always good to have a little bit of theirs and then make it yours and change it. And then, cause they always give you ideas and then you find out how to make it better. But I think they should have just a teeny bit of creative just to help because sometimes you as the performer sometimes will be like, Oh man, you know, like I'm getting a little stale. I wonder if someone could just help me out a little bit, you know, right. but I I'm so looking forward to seeing their stuff and, you know, and it's making WWE, it's making everyone else sweat, which is good for all the boys. It makes more money for everybody. The longs there keeps people like this, it keeps the business better. I mean, it just helps everybody because it shows, you know, people want to go there. And then mm -hmm. people want to go there, not WWE, then WWE needs to step up. And then they got to change the way they work. So, you know, it's, it's crazy and, and it's a good time for pro wrestling. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to see where it's going and how it's evolving yeah it's definitely a good time to be in this business so it'll be interesting to see how it goes the big thing we've talked about with aw is they need that tv deal hasn't come out yet but it, it, i just keep hearing more and more that it's all signs point to tbs or tnt uh the turner networks that's what i heard so too. I mean, for how full a steam ahead they're going with everything, I mean, you, it'd be silly to think they don't have something kind of already set up in the back pocket. They're just mm -hmm. waiting for it to be finalized to come out. But yeah, this is the <laughs> this could be the makings of another. I don't want to say Monday Night War, but just another, you know, uh, ratings battle. I guess you could say in the world of wrestling. Well, they, yeah, they're they're gonna do great. Yeah, because they're gonna be able to. I want to see, are they going to tour like WWE right off the bat? Um, My guessing is that they're going to probably have a home area where they're probably going to film TV because it, filming TV, other locations cost a lot of money and it's very expensive. I mean, I've just been in the wrestling game for a long time. I know how the production works. I know pretty much the ins and outs. What I'm guessing is they're probably going to have a home area but then they'll do house shows and other shows like that to help promote, but they'll probably have a main area and then they'll do super shows and their pay-per-views and other places. But I think they're going to have a main, they're going to have to have like a kind of like a main little headquarters area to film all the TV and stuff like that, just because of price for production. I just, I know how much all that stuff costs and to do it at every event touring right now, I don't think that's something that's going to happen. I think that they're just going to have a main area. They'll do house shows and pay-per-views all over the place. Hmm. Yeah. So, man, if that's the case, Florida is really becoming the wrestling hub. Because that's their... Well, they'll probably do in Jacksonville. Yeah, they'll be based out of Jacksonville. You've got the WWE Performance Center in Orlando. I mean, like I said, Florida is becoming like that wrestling hub for like just all things wrestling now. Yep pretty crazy but uh since we don't always talk all things wrestling on here we like talked about every other stuff too and the big uh pop culture sporting event that's coming up soon is the super bowl i personally checked out when my cowboys lost <laughs> i was very sad so i i don't have like a stake in the game i'm interested the to cowboy see oh 
what are you talking about? I know. I mean, I think I'm with everybody else when I'm like, yeah, it'd be cool to see LA win. Uh, I'm also one of those people who's tired of watching Tom Brady every year in the Super Bowl. Whatever, Tom Brady's your boyfriend. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, what, what, what's your uh, what's your prediction? Don't tell me who you like, who you don't like. What, what, what's your prediction? I'm going to take LA. They've been on a roll all year. And uh, <laughs> they've been on a roll all year. I don't see them uh, slowing down. Brady makes it to the game. He doesn't always win the game, though, so that's my thing with it. So uh, I'm going to check out the little halftime heat show on the WWE Network instead of watching Maroon 5 because I have no interest in that, and I'm hoping for some good commercials. Never happens. Well, so uh, is um, – what's his name? Not going to do the uh, half ball, the, the halftime show? Um, how did I forget this rapper? Um, oh, Trey Song. I, uh, was it Travis Scott? Travis Scott. Travis Scott. I, I I don't know. I haven't listened too much into it just because again, uh, I knew I know Maroon Five is the headliner for the halftime show, and I have no interest. Not that I hate Maroon Five or anything, but it's just I don't know those halftime shows. Whatever. That's your little boy band. All uh, these guests. Don't uh, show all these guests. I've been with you, and I've heard your ringtone. I mean, I'm down with Justin Timberlake last year. That was a damn good one. And being that it was home and I'm a Minnesota boy, the Prince tribute was cool because Prince really is. That I did like that. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that half time show. You know what I mean? And there's been some cool ones in the past, but I don't know, man. I'm just not really geeked out to watch Maroon 5 play their rocking tunes during the hard hitting football game that I already yeah. don't really care about. Instead, the match that's being advertised is going to be. Uh, Ricochet and uh, Alistair Black and uh, Velveteen Dream versus uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, and Adam Cole. See, I don't. That's not going to get any views. Everyone's going to watch the Super Bowl halftime show just because they're going to see what Travis Scott's going to do. Because there's been the huge thing with uh, Kaepernick mm -hmm. and all the stuff with Kaepernick and. All this back and forth, you know, and like a lot of people now are not behind Kaepernick because of what's been saying. Like, if you're not with Kaepernick, it's not about Kaepernick. It's about what they're trying to trying to reach is about you know, the message that they're trying to promote. And now it's kind of turned around where it's just about Kaepernick or if you're not for Kaepernick, then you're against everybody. No. No, everyone can support their cause because what they did is Travis Scott and a bunch of other guys, they did a foundation and raised money and gave back to the community, which I don't see homeboy doing that. No, nah, he ain't doing that. He's just sitting at his house whining like a little bitch. But I don't think you should tell another grown man what you do. Dude, this is why I don't like him. He even called out Big Boy from Outcast. Mm -hmm. He called out Big Boy from Outcast and tell him Big Boy sold out. Boy, what you talking about? Man, you don't know nothing about them blacks. You don't know nothing about riding the dirty. Come on now. You cannot tell me big boy sold out. Well, and the other thing, too, is that, that facts right there, boy. Well, and the other thing, too, is what are you going to do, Kaepernick? You're not, you're not playing. You signed a big deal at Nike that's not going to be around forever. What are nope. you going to do, man? You got to make money somehow. So shit or get off the pot. Stop sitting there and looking for reasons to blame other people for other shit. And just... Dude, dude had potential. He had a great arm. I mean, had nothing. potential. Never played out. Then he started whining like a little bitch, as Too Short would say, bitch. Right. So, well, it'll be fun to watch, anyways. Though, go L.A. Rams. That's my. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you didn't ask me my prediction, but I'm gonna go for L.A. I know yeah. probably Tom Brady is gonna do his. I mean, this is. You know, whatever. I think Tom Brady will probably win it, but I'm rooting for LA. I'm going for LA. Come on, LA. Let's do this. Yeah, go Rams. So uh before we head out though, Wes, let's get any of your dates you got going on. You got anything cool coming up that we should know about? People can check you out at. I know there's some big shows coming down the pipe here that are gonna be huge that people need to get their tickets for. Yes. Um, right now, this weekend, I have a huge thing, which is really cool um, for Atomic Resolution Wrestling, the company that uh, I work for. 
um, we're actually doing a cruise line and we're doing an autograph thing where we're doing a thing that's called fan creation week where we're going to take a bunch of the fans and we're bring them on the boat and it's uh, food, drinks, and then we sign autographs and we actually get to hang out with them. And that's on the Victory Casino cruise boat, which is pretty fun. Like, and they give me a stack of cards like that of all free food. Literally, I can't tell you how much I eat. I mean, kind of go off my diet maybe just a little bit for this occasion because I'm going to eat chicken wings. I'm going to eat pizza. I'm going to eat hamburgers. Oh, I can't wait. But it's really good for all the fans because they actually get to hang out with us. Uh, Jesse Neal will be there. There will be a bunch of other superstars there. So it's a really, really, really good time. And um, then right after that, um, I believe that's right when you'll be coming down after that. And then, of course, we got the big show coming up for that. And, we'll, you know, we won't give too much away with that. We'll just wait for you to come down. But, uh, yeah, guys, and please make sure you guys hit our like button, our subscribe button, leave a comment. Just say what's up. If you guys have any questions, anything you want to ask me or Big Ace, we're always here for you. We always, you know, we'll be happy to respond. And, two, we'll always give you a shout-out, too. So please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, do your thing, and, you know, keep on listening. That's right, man. Uh, share it with everybody. Everything you can do, find us on all of our social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't know if there's any. Spotify, iTunes, yes. uh, anywhere YouTube. that you can see a podcast, we be on it. Yep, YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on there. Oh, so much stuff that we're going to be bringing you again. Uh, but this is going to put uh, a close to episode eight, the Briscoe and Big A show. Signing off. We'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.